Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon uh, for the letter of permission info session to learn about taking classes at other universities or other institutions and having them transferred back to Dalhousie. Uh, my name is Christine. I am the Assistant Registrar of Transfer Credits and Student Mobility. Um, before I get too far, I did want to note that we are going to be recording today's presentation. Um, to distribute to students afterwards. And I also want to take a moment to acknowledge that Dalhousie is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And we are all treaty people. I also want to acknowledge the histories, contributions, and legacies of the African Nova Scotian people and communities who have been here for over 400 years. So again, thank you for taking the time uh, to meet with me. I have about 30, 35 minutes of content today. Um, and so we'll have lots of time at the end for questions. Um, because I am facilitating the session on my own, I just ask that you hold your questions till the end um, and we'll have lots of time to chat then. I'm just gonna turn off my camera uh, for the remainder of the session. And uh, today we're going to cover a number of topics, including, you know, what does the registrar's office do? What is the registrar's office, which is the office I work for? Um, what is a letter of permission? Why someone would need that? The eligibility requirements, how you actually complete the form, as well as processing timelines, um, what you need to do after you have had a letter of permission approved, and some special considerations around graduation and final grades, and then some tips and helpful hints. So the registrar's office, when I was creating this presentation, it struck me that um, some students might not know what the registrar's office is. I didn't know what the registrar's office was until I applied to graduate at Dal. Um, but the registrar's office is a cross-divisional um, administrative office, and we really support administrative processes from the time a student applies for Dal all the way through to graduation. And my team specifically, what we are responsible for is supporting um, the academic mobility of our students. And academic mobility refers to students who are um, pursuing academic experiences outside of Dalhousie. Um, we are also responsible for all the administrative tasks associated with having courses assessed for possible transfer credit and for the processing of letters of permission and updating students academic records. And what a letter of permission is at the very you know, basic level, it's a form that gives students permission to take courses at other post-secondary institutions while being enrolled at Dalhousie and to receive transfer credit for those courses that would count towards their Dalhousie degrees. And before I go any further, all of the information that I covered today is also available at dal.ca slash LOP. We'll also be um, distributing, just going to admit a guest. We'll also be distributing this presentation to all of the registrants as well afterwards. So don't feel like you have to remember everything or take notes on everything. Um, the letters of permission are used for any institutions that Dalhousie does not have a formal transfer agreement and transfer agreement really refers to exchanges. So any students that aren't taking part in an exchange program university wide would use a letter of permission. Um, but of course, there's always exceptions. So departmental exchanges, so department specific international exchanges do use the letter of permission unless you're in commerce, computer science or marine biology. So to uh, cover that again or to reiterate, letters of permission are used for any institutions with which we don't have a formal exchange agreement except for departmental exchanges except for commerce, computer science, and marine biology. So if you are interested in participating in a university-wide or a commerce, computer science, or marine biology exchange, you should visit dal.ca slash learning agreements for more information because there's a different form and a slightly different process. And within the form, there are three main sections. So there's personal information. Uh, we require some supplemental academic enrollment and financial aid information. And then finally, finally the transfer credit information. So this is what the letter of permission form looks like. Um, the form itself is fairly straightforward, but there are some processes and considerations that you need to take into account before you actually fill it out that can make things more complex. And that's part of what we're trying to simplify with this presentation today. So 
the reasons a student might want to take a course at another institution through letters of permission vary, but the most common ones would be that a student needs to complete degree requirements, but for a number of reasons they're unable to do so through Dalhousie, and that might be the particular course they need aren't offered in a given term, the course is full, they may have a scheduling conflict with another required class that they're taking at Dal, or they may be living outside the local area. So obviously we've had a lot of letter of permission interest over the last couple of years, um, but further back we would have a lot of students looking at letter of permission um, over the summer term where they may not be living in Halifax or Truro and looking to take classes back in their hometown. Um, we have students who may be interested in a learning opportunity that's not available at Dalhousie, so looking to take classes um, that we don't offer or perhaps learn from a particular instructor or professor at another university. Or as I mentioned previously, you're participating in a departmental exchange with the exception of commerce, computer science, or marine biology, which again, dal.ca slash learning agreements. There are several eligibility requirements that a student needs to meet in order to have their letter of permission approved. Um, and they include a student needing to be registered in a degree program and in good academic standing. So academic standing does refer to your GPA, which needs to be at least 2.0 or above. But academic standing is only determined once a student has attempted 24 credit hours of classes. So if you're a student who's attempted less than 24 credit hours, but you still want to take a class through letter of permission or LOP is what I'll refer to it here on out, um, you may be able to receive provisional approval if you've achieved a GPA of at least 2.7 in one full term of study. Typically students who have achieved less than that GPA and do not have academic standings who have attempted fewer than 24 credit hours would not be eligible to take classes through letter of permission. Uh, students can't owe money to Dalhousie. You cannot exceed the maximal, maximum allowable transfer credits, and that is to say that a maximum of 50% of any credential can be completed through transfer credits, and that refers to a degree, a major, or minor, any credential. So a student who might be registered in a 120 credit hour degree can only take up to 50, excuse me, 60 credit hours through transfer credits. On top of that, if the student is majoring in, say, economics, they can only complete 50% of their economics courses through transfer credits. You know, the theory being that to graduate from Dalhousie, you have to do at least 50% of your credential here at Dal. The course has to be acceptable to transfer to Dal, and I'll give you a little bit more detail about how you determine that in a few slides. Um, and the course cannot be offered through challenge for credit or prior learning assessment at the other institution. So it has to be a four credit course offered at the other institution. Um, the total workload cannot exceed Dalhousie's limits, so most students are typically limited to 15 credit hours of courses in a single term, and that would include your LOP and Dal courses. And we'll go into a bit more detail about that in a few slides as well. And the course cannot be offered at Dalhousie in the term in which the student in which the student wants to take it, uh, or the student has a scheduling conflict, or the course is full, or the student is living outside the local area, which are all of the reasons I mentioned previously. So if you can take the class at Dalhousie and you have access to it, that we would expect you to take it at Dal, but there could be any number of extenuating circumstances that would prevent you from being able to do so. So presuming that you meet all of the eligibility requirements, the next question is how you actually fill out the form. And the first step is to read the instructions that are available at dal.ca slash LOP. And LOPs should be completed and approved before registering in the courses. Um, we'll talk about why more uh, throughout the presentation, but very important that before you're registering at another institution or starting a course at another institution, you are getting approval through letter of permission. The first step, very straightforward, you're just going to fill in your personal information and we recommend that you download the form using the Internet Explorer browser and read the instructions carefully. Um, the form is a fillable PDF that has electronic signature capabilities, but in order to enable all of those capabilities, you should download the form to your desktop before you start filling it out. And then that way you won't have to print the form, you can just do it all electronically. 
So if you can see a little example here of the letter of permission where I've just filled in some hypothetical information, although this is my email address. So if you need to get in contact with me, christine.wilson at dal.ca. Happy to answer any questions. The next step would be to provide the request required supplemental academic enrollment and financial aid information. And a special note about financial aid, if you will be receiving government student loans in the same term that you're completing letter of permission courses, you will need to have your LOP institution fill out a confirmation of registration form and send that to awards at dal.ca. And the reason for that is because most uh, government student loans require students to take a minimum number of credit hours in order to prevent their student loan from going into repayment. And so we need that other institution to confirm to DAL how many courses you're registered in so we can pass that information along to the various provincial uh, funding bodies. So I've written in my uh, program, Bachelor of Arts. I've included the reason that I'm taking the course elsewhere, that the course is full at DAL. Um, I've indicated I won't be, well, that doesn't make sense. So I, I am taking classes at DAL at the same time, and I won't be receiving any government student loans. If you are, we've linked the confirmation of registration form right on the LOP form. And I've also indicated when I would be taking that LOP course. The next step is to complete the transfer credit equivalency information. So this is where you fill in the courses that you plan to register in at the other institution, and you need to confirm whether or not those courses have been approved to transfer to Dalhousie in the past. And the way that you would do that is by reviewing the transfer credit equivalency table. Um, before we get into that, though, I do want to provide a bit more information about the maximum workload. So I mentioned previously, most students are limited to 15 credit hours in a single term, and that would be inclusive of your LOP and DAL classes. So if you're registered in four courses at Dalhousie, so 12 credit hours, you can only take one additional course, three credit hours, through letter of permission, unless you have a GPA of at least 3.0 in your previous term. In that case, you can uh, request permission for to you can request that the maximum be increased to 18 credit hours um, by contacting the registrar's office directly. If you are wanting to exceed uh, the normal workload, so take more than 15 credit hours um, in a single term, including your LOP classes, and you're a first year student or you have a term GPA below a 3.0 in your previous term, you would need to fill out a request to exceed the maximum workload and submit that to your faculty or school or college for approval. And um, the registrar's office won't be able to process your letter of permission until we receive approval to exceed your maximum workload. So jumping back to the transfer credit equivalency, um, this transfer credit equivalency table is accessible through DAL online, or you can also access it at dal.ca slash LOP, either or. And the equivalency table looks like this. So it's a database that shows all of the courses that are currently approved to transfer to Dalhousie. And you would you know, select using these drop down menus, the province or out of country, um, so the location of your institution, um, the name of your institution, and I will just note that we do have a character limit in our system, and so in some cases we will have actually shortened the name uh, of the institution, so just keep an eye out for that. And I've chosen Adelaide because I would love to be in Australia today. Um, and then also you would choose the department from which you're hoping to receive credit. In this particular instance, we can see that three courses are currently approved to transfer to Dalhousie. So if I was interested in taking Economics 3501 at the University of Adelaide, Deve Developmental Economics, I would receive as a transfer credit Econ 3333 at Dalhousie and would receive three credit hours. And in that case, my letter of permission is going to be pretty straightforward. I would just record the course that I'm interested in taking as well as the term directly on the form. And that's really the extent of the information that I need to provide. Little bit more information about what you might find on the equivalency table. 
quite a number of the courses listed on the equivalency table will be listed as electives. Um, and these are for courses that are not exactly equivalent to something that we teach at Dalhousie, but are comparable. And so in that case, it won't be granted equivalency to a specific class um, like biology 1011, but instead would be granted a general elective equivalency. I've provided an example here with economics. So a course that's comparable, but not directly equivalent would be granted or could be granted an economics 199X transfer credit. And that means that the course is equivalent to a first year or a 1000 level economics course, but it doesn't correspond specifically to any of our first year courses. And general elective transfer credits can of course fulfill elective require, uh, requirements, but also subject matter requirements. And we can see two examples of this if we go back to the equivalency table with the first two classes listed being approved to transfer as a 2000 level and 3000 level elective. Um, if you're interested in taking classes at the other institution that do not appear on the equivalency table, it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't transfer. What it probably means is that we haven't reviewed it for transfer in the past. And in that case, what you would need to provide along with your letter of permission is course information, which we can send to the most relevant academic unit on campus to review. So it's not actually the registrar's office that determines transfer credits. It is the faculty that offers the most closely related curriculum. And in order to do that, they're going to need course information. So you would need to collect course information from the LOP institution, and we would look for it to be official. So I've included some examples of what would be considered official course information. Um, important to note that it needs to be from the same academic year that you plan to take the course. So if you're looking to take an LOP course in the summer term, this upcoming summer term, we would require course information from the 2021-2022 academic year. And the reason for that is because uh, curriculum can change from year to year. And all course information must be provided in English. So if you're looking to take a class at an institution that does not provide course information in English, you would need to have it translated by a certified translator. And they would indicate their you know, certification either through a stamp or a signature on the translation. And it's important to note that that would come at a cost. Um, exceptions are made though for non-English language culture courses, uh, non-English language and culture courses that are taken in Arabic, Chinese, French, German, Italian, Russian, or Spanish, which are the language departments that we have here at Dalhousie. Um, so if you're interested in taking a French literature course from a Francophone institution, um, we can accept French course information because that will just be sent to the French department and of course they can read French. But if you're interested in taking a business course from a Francophone institution, you would need to have the, transla uh, the information translated. Most of our departments will accept course descriptions in order to assess for transfer credits, but some require a full course outline or syllabus, and they would include anatomy, architecture, commerce, computer science, engineering, health and human performance, which would include uh, kinesiology, health promotion, indigenous studies, journalism, kinesiology, leisure studies, management, microbiology and immunology, physiology, and planning. Additional course information may also be requested from other departments, but as a first step, we can accept course descriptions for all other academic units. So you would submit the course information along with your letter of permission. And as I said, our team will then forward that on to the academic unit for review. It's important to note that if your letter of permission does require a departmental assessment, it will extend the length of processing. And there are three possible outcomes from a departmental assessment. The first being you're given an exact equivalency for something we teach here at Dow. Um, the second being you're granted a general elective transfer credit, which we've already talked about. And the third option is that it is possible a course may be determined not eligible for transfer credit. And that's one of the reasons it's incredibly important that students are going through the letter of permission process before taking the class at the other institution. You don't want to have paid for a class only to find out that you're not going to be able to get transfer credit for it at Dalhousie. So once you've determined what courses you're interested in, whether or not they're pre-approved to transfer and collected the necessary course information, if they aren't pre-approved, the next step is to simply sign the form and send it to lopatdal.ca. 
Um, by signing the form, you are confirming that you've read all of the information on the reverse side of the letter of permission form, so please be sure to do that. And for certain programs, students are required to receive permission, not just from the registrar's office, but also from their home faculty. So if you're a student in the faculties of engineering or management, or the schools of health and human performance, nursing or social work, uh, before your letter of permission is submitted to the registrar's office, you'll need to take it to your faculty or school for approval. So you can see here I've written down the course I'm interested in taking. I've signed it here, which again, you can do electronically and dated because I'm in the Bachelor of Arts. I'm not required to get any additional approval and I would send it to LOP at DAL.ca. So processing timelines. If your courses are all pre-approved to transfer, uh, typically processing requires two to three weeks when you send it to LOP at DAL.ca. If you need your letter of permission to be processed more urgently, you can uh, visit one of our enrollment service centers, which are located on in Halifax, Sexton and Studley campus and in Truro uh, on our agricultural campus, and they'll be able to process it urgently. Some of our service centers are currently requiring students to make uh, service appointments just to manage the volume of people in the office, and I've provided a link there where you can learn more, um, but generally two to three weeks. For letters of permission with courses that are requiring departmental assessment, the processing time will typically be between four to six weeks. And unfortunately, because we are working with a number of different academic units on campus um, and we don't have total control over the processing of them, um, we're unable to expedite assessments for these letters of permission. So two to three weeks for those that are pre-approved with the option to come into our office for more urgent processing, four to six weeks for those that require a departmental assessment. So once uh, your letter of permission has been approved, your academic record will be updated with pending transfer credits or transfer credits that have no grade recorded yet, and you'll receive email notification of that. And there's a few things that you need to be sure that you do. The first one, which is incredibly important, is to run a degree audit and ensure the transfer credits are counting towards your degree as you expected. So simply because a course is approved to transfer to Dalhousie does not necessarily guarantee it's going to fulfill the specific degree requirement that you need. So it's Im vitally important that you're confirming that the transfer credits are counting as you expected them to before registering elsewhere. Again, you don't want to have paid for the course at the other institution only to find out that the transfer credit doesn't actually fulfill your writing requirement as an example. The next thing that you would do is um, you will receive an approved copy of your letter of permission via email and you would apply to the other institution as well as supply them with a copy of your approved letter of permission. Um, ad admission and letter of permission processes at other institutions will vary, but by and large, most will require students to fill out an application and pay an application fee, as well as provide a copy of the LOP. And they require a copy typically because um, they'll use that instead of requiring a, an official transcript. And that's because the letter of permission being approved by the registrar's office would indicate that you're in good academic standing and you know will be academically prepared to study at their institution. Some may require a transcript, although that's not very common. Um, for specific information, though, it's best to refer to the other institution's website or contact them directly. And most institutions will identify LOP students as visiting students or special students. And that just really indicates that you're studying at their institution uh, for you know, one or, or a handful of courses and are planning to transfer them back to your home institution being Dalhousie. And once you've completed the LOP class, you need to remember to arrange for an official transcript to be sent to the registrar's office. So for letter of permission courses, the grades that you receive will be recorded on your DAL transcript, but only once we've received an official transcript from your LOP institution. couple of important considerations around graduation. So if you're choosing to take LOP courses in your final term before your anticipated graduation, it's important to note that it may delay your graduation. And the reason for that is because, as I mentioned, your grades won't be updated on your DAL record until we get the official transcript from the LOP institution. And the timing of when official transcripts are made available at the other institution might cause the delay. 
So typically we need to receive an official transcript by May 1st in order for everything to be processed in time for spring graduation and by September 1st for fall graduation. If transcripts are received after those dates, we can't guarantee that they'll be processed in time um, for Senate to approve the graduation lists. some additional considerations around final grades. So final grades are recorded differently depending on the location of your LOP institution. If the institution's located in Canada, we will record the letter grade, the specific letter grade that is um, indicated on your transcript. If letter grades are not used at your LOP institutions and they use numeric grades like percentages, we'll simply convert that to the appropriate DAL letter grade and still use a letter grade on your DAL record. Um, if the institution uses a letter grade that we might not have here at Dalhousie, we'll again convert it to, you know, the closest grade that we have. So an example, um, D plus is not a grade that we have at Dalhousie. So if you go to an institution where that grade is available, we would convert that to a grade of D, but hope that no one, no one has that experience. Um, and then finally, when percentage and letter grades are both recorded on the official transcript, it's the letter grade that we'll use um, when updating your academic record at DAL. Now for courses taken at institutions outside of Canada, we will record grades of pass or fail as appropriate. So it's incredibly important to be sure that the grading mode that's used for your LOP institution will fulfill the requirements at DAL. So as an example, if you are required to complete a course with a minimum grade of B minus for your degree, you should not take this course through letter of permission at an international institution because it will only receive a grade of pass or fail. So a couple of tips or helpful reminders, of course, read the LOP form and dal.ca slash LOP. We really recommend that you choose courses in consultation with an academic advisor. So you want to be really clear about what degree requirements it is that you're intending to transfer credits to. Um, even if that's just electives, you want to make sure you have enough room for those electives. And you want to make sure that the credit conversion and grades that will be used will allow those requirements to be filled completely. So as an example, there are occasions where Dalhousie will transfer two courses from another institution and grant only three credit hours here at Dal. Well, you want to be sure you're aware of that if you need actually six credit hours to graduate. You want to be sure that you su submit your letter of permission with enough time to be processed. So again, two to three weeks if they have pre-approved equivalencies, although if you're located within you know, travel distance of our campuses, you can visit our um, enrollment service centers for more urgent processing. And four to six weeks if you require uh, departmental assessment. The last tip is that sometimes students find themselves in the position where they're unable to register for the LOP course. So they may have you know, gone through the approval process at DAL, but when they go to register at the other institution, um, the course is full. So you should let us know before the add drop deadline at Dalhousie within the term that you would plan to take the LOP course that you aren't, weren't able to register and we can simply remove it from your record. After the add drop deadline at Dow, we would require the uh, other institution to provide official confirmation that you didn't register for the course. And that's typically provided through a letter of non-enrollment or through a transcript that doesn't list the course in question. And we know that, you know, drop dates and deadlines vary at institutions and they don't necessarily correspond to exactly what we have it here here at Dal, but we use our ad drop deadline as a general guideline, um, you know, around which we can expect a student to be able to drop a course without any sort of notation on their academic record. And so that's why we make the delineation with our own dates. So that's all of the content that I had. I, I realized it was a lot of information in a short amount of time. So I'm just going to turn on my camera and open it up for questions. Does anybody have a question? And you can feel free to type it in the chat or you can just raise your hand. I can see that someone's typing, so I'm just going to give it a few minutes. No, so is the question is, is there any difference for online courses? Um, so 
No, if a course appears uh, on the transfer credit equivalency table as approved, then you can take the course, whether it's online or in person. If a course needs to be assessed and it's online, it will be up to the academic unit to determine whether it's equivalent or comparable, even though it's being offered online. So an example where that may not be acceptable would be if a student is wanting to take a course that at Dalhousie has an in-person lab component. That assessor may deem an online option elsewhere not exactly equivalent because it doesn't have that lab. One note about online um, options, there are some other institutions that have a lot of online options, particularly Athabasca University or Thompson Rivers University, where their dates and deadlines don't necessarily line up exactly with ours. So sometimes they'll give students six months to complete a course where our terms are four months. And in that instance, we would put the letter of permission course in the term where you're completing the largest amount of content. And it's important to note with your transcripts, we give students about a month after they've completed their LOP term to supply the official transcripts. After that month, the no grade on your academic record will switch to incomplete. Now incomplete does have a negative impact on your GPA, but as soon as we receive your updated transcript, that will be nullified because we'll add the letter grade. So it's just important to know with online courses, if the um, timeline of our terms don't match the online start and end dates, you might see some changes happening with your grades. But again, once we get the final transcript, that will be nullified. That's a great question. Any other questions? I can just see some more typing, so I'm just going to hang on a few seconds. Oh, maybe not. Well, if there aren't any other questions, just again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you follow up, would like to follow up later, um, you can always email me directly, christine.wilson at dal.ca or lop at dal.ca, um, and we'd be happy to help you out. So I hope this was helpful and informative, and um, I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.